start with your feet out uh, into a wide distance. So again, this is after you've been playing for a while, so maybe you, you know, you're not doing it as deep as I am. I'm just gonna turn my feet out, I'm gonna bend my knees, and I'm gonna take my arms up to the side, I'm gonna turn my thumbs up, and I'm gonna rotate my thumbs down so my shoulders are rotating in, and then I'm gonna rotate the shoulders out, and then just come up a little bit higher, don't sit as low as you can, and when it's relaxed, then it's, it's always a little bit easier to sit a little bit lower if that's something that you're working towards or wanting to produce, right? And then I'm gonna come up and then I'll just relax the arms and the shoulders. I'm gonna go back into that. I'm gonna bend the knees, take the arms up to the side. My thumbs are turned up, I'm rotating out. I'm in a posterior tilt. So the tailbone's moving down and the pubic bone's moving up. And then this just emphasizes more stretch into the glutes and into the hamstrings. And then you can bring yourself back up and you can bring the arms down. So just bring the feet back in. Not gonna do a lot of this, but it'll help the floor. I'm, I'm balancing on my right foot. You could use a wall or a chair, but if I'm not holding the foot, I'm trying to bring the leg up into the hand. So if it's easy for you, you can see that I'm making a fist. So I'm bringing it up and then let's say it's cramping, it's a sign of weakness or dehydration, right? But I'm gonna take the leg up, trying to lift it again, and then bringing it down. And then one more time, I'm gonna take it up. And again, if it was just really tight quads, this, this is good to do too. You know, this is a great thing to do, stretch out the quadriceps. You know, if you had a more of a net game, right? Running in and out, your legs are probably tight from that. So you could hold the foot and then I'll bring the left foot down. I'm gonna take the, just so you can see I'm turning, I'm taking my right foot up. Um, Again, if you needed to hold it or place it on a chair, you could do that. I'm bringing it down. I'm taking it up. Um, I'm not really concerned with touching the foot. It's just a target. And then I'm bringing it down. And then one more time, I'm gonna take it up. And, and again, as it gets easier, make the, the target further away to help with the curling of the leg, which will strengthen the hamstring. And again, if you wanted to hold the foot at the very end, you could hold it to stretch out the quadriceps. You just obviously want to be careful with your knee. And then bringing your, set my left foot back about three feet. My hands are on my hips. I'm in an anterior tilt of my pelvis and I'm coming forward. And as I come forward, what you want to find is the line that you're tight in. So you could certainly go further and down, but that might not necessarily give you the results that you want in exposing the hamstring. Now you could come up which is what's used in yoga, right? Just static holes. But the coming forward and the coming down, that's when you're gonna feel the greatest stretch in the leg. So it's this type of stretching, it's more ballistic stretching, um, especially for an athlete, can be better. You could bring yourself up. You know, if you were going for deep relaxation, that was your thing, well then you would hold it and it more like what we, in yoga, we call it yin yoga, right? But I'm forward, I'm driving my right foot to the floor to expose more of the hamstring. And for you, if you have tight hamstrings, your knee would probably be bent a little bit. And then you can bring yourself up. I'm gonna step the left foot forward and then step the right foot back. And with these closed hip positions, you're hugging the feet in. So it's like I'm trying to squeeze my legs to the middle. So when I come forward, Again, I'm, I'm finding that stretch in my leg. For me, this is a good angle. You know, if the lower you get, the benefit is, is it's more of a stretch in the anterior of the hip. So that, that can be good. And then you're coming up. And then you're coming forward. Like I said, say you're like, oh, I just want to hold this statically. You could do that. But like I said, when you go into it, you'll really feel like a much greater stretch in the leg and then coming up, and then last time I'm coming forward. And especially if you have a history of back pain, especially like lower back, often it's keeping your back extended is better. Not always, but most cases it is. And then bringing yourself back up and then you can step the right foot forward. Again, take it to the floor. So you can fold forward until forward fold and touch the floor. I'm gonna set my left foot back into a lunge and then I'm trying to get my armpit, my knee together. And with these, try to lift the 
think that the leg is lifting into the chest. And then just for a moment, I'm going to bring the knee down and I'm going to lean into my left side, right? And this is more for hip flexor and psoas. And then I'm going to tuck the toes and lift the, the back knee up just for a moment. And then I'm going to bring the back knee down. Now, if I'm below, it's all posterior, right? Back and shoulders and hips. And this is good, right? But for some people, it might actually be better of a stretch to come up. This is more for extension. You'll definitely feel it more in um, hip flexors and psoas, right? Through here. So I'm going to take the back, um, my hips back in space to stretch out the hamstrings. So I'm moving my hips back in space. And then I'm moving my foot, right, to kind of adjust the hamstring. So I could point it forward, I can flex it back, right? For you, you may actually need like chairs, right, or like a wall. And then I'm, I'm going to come forward like I did in the pyramid. And even though getting lower appears to be a bigger stretch, it might be better to be upright just to stretch out the hamstring. Like you put your leg on a countertop that type of stretch. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll take my back knee off the floor. Just to stretch, I'm going to take the right arm up to the ceiling. So the right arm is high, and then I'm going to take the arm forward, looking to the hand. You can take the right arm up, and then bring the right hand down, and then step the left foot forward, and separate the feet just a little bit wider than the shoulders. If you have a good squat, you can squat low, um, just to stretch out more of the hips. If I turn the feet out, it's more inner thigh and adductor. If I have the feet more forward, it's more calf muscle and more into the quadricep. So fold into a forward fold and then step the right foot back into a lunge. So with the right foot back, I'm connecting the armpit and the knee together, right? As, I, as I'm in this position, I'm gonna bring the back knee down and just get lower in my lunge, just to stretch out my back. And then I'm gonna take the back knee up. So when you're loaded, it's kind of like what we did in the upright position. It's, it, it's more dynamic stretching. Right? It's not relaxed stretching, it's active stretching. So then I'm gonna come down and now, if I'm down and I'm low, like I said, it's all shoulders and back and hips, but just test, test what you need. So if I come up in space, it might be like, oh, what I, I, would, I was shy. On days that I felt good, I would, I would do what's more difficult and, de and demanding. And then on days that I, I, I didn't really feel my best, I would make it more easy and more, um, you know, more kind of maintenance. So I can lift up in space. I'm gonna bring the hands down. I'm gonna take the back knee off the floor and then I'm gonna take the left arm up to the ceiling. So the left arm is high and the right hand is low. I can take it forward in space and then bringing the left arm up and then bringing the left hand down. And then, so have your, feet together and cross your left foot over your right. So just a basic jogger stretch, right? But this is always very good because it's all one side specific. So it's really my right side that I'm exposing more, right? There's in, you know, like more dynamic stretching, it's, it's almost like you're bouncing, but that's really not for everybody. But there's a myth behind it where people say it's dangerous it can certainly be very useful. It depends on the person, right? So I'm gonna bring the weight forward, I'm gonna bring my left foot next to my right, and then I'm gonna set my right foot next to my left, and then I'm forward and I'm down. Like in martial arts, there's a lot of balancing to stretch out, which, like I said, can be very helpful, useful. It's just, you're injured or you're prone to injury, right? Then, and it's probably not the best approach. I'm not doing that, but you could certainly add a little bit of down. feet a little bit wider than my shoulders and I'm going to take the knees over to the right side so this is internal rotation so just see in sitting upright if it's very difficult for you this could be useful in getting the thigh to rotate in and you know because you're an athlete the outside of your hip is probably very tight because you're you're running so much which is just a byproduct of you know training what I'm going to do, I don't need a block, but I'm going to use a block and I'm going to come forward. And by using a block, you're not going to come as far forward, but it's a little bit more specific in adjusting the hip. So if I'm not, if I'm using my hands, 
I can certainly go further forward and down, but you're probably not stretching as much. Right? So I'm going to come up kind of like what I did in the upright position is I'm going to come forward again. When I'm in these positions like this, I'm trying to lift my right leg into my chest and that's what's helping to stretch up my hip more. And then coming up and I'm going to take the knees up and I'm going to take the knees over to the left side as my knees are to the left. Again, just kind of see if it's, you know, because the hips can get really wonky and getting good internal rotation, which is usually that as we age, that's where people really um, become deficient in, is internal rotation, not just external rotation. So again, you could stay up, but I'm gonna come forward, I'm gonna bring myself forward towards my left leg and adjusting my hip and then bringing myself up and then coming forward, coming down, bringing myself up. And then one last time I'm gonna come forward. And when I come forward, I'm again, trying to lift my front leg into my chest. It, it'll never come off the floor, but if you're actively lifting it up, it makes a difference. It'll get you more forward of your leg. And then I'm gonna take my knees up. I'm gonna take my right leg over my left. And then I'm gonna come forward. And then as I come forward, I'm gonna reach the foot and, and just to stretch it out. But you can hold on to something, um, a strap or a towel. And like I said, like some people, they're, they're here, and I'm not making fun of anybody, but they're here. So it, it would be good to get some extra weight. So that could be something like a, a, like a lightweight, like a five pound weight, 10 pound weight to start with to get you more forward and down. And then you could come up. I wouldn't do a whole lot of that, maybe five, 10 reps, and maybe three sets, something. Right, I'm gonna come up and then take the right leg forward and then the left leg over the right. And then I'm gonna come forward, right? I'm in an anterior tilt to the pelvis, stretching the leg out. What can be useful is pushing the leg down to the floor, but also thinking of lifting it up. So if, if, if you wanna try pressing the leg down, you can see the benefits, but then you can also think of lifting it up and that can be you know, useful. So just, just to counter these, have the knees bent, have the hands bent.